guys, I'm Sarah and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a pile of reviews <laughs> of this series. Um, I'm doing a pile of reviews of the Villain, a Villains Ever After series. I've read all of these and I just need to get caught up in actually doing a review of them because reasons. I have been trying to do um, reviews once of one book of a video, but I've just got them all piled up here, so I just figured I'll kind of just do them all at once since they're all novellas anyways and you can't say too much. So yeah, I'll just be doing that. Um, I have one other uh, review of one of the books in this series. I have a review for Hansel and the Gingerbread Queen, which is book six in the series. Um, I have a separate video of that one that I did earlier. I'll link it in the description so you can find it. Um, yeah, but this is just that. Uh, this, so if you're not familiar with this series, this is a, um, series of retell, fairy tale retellings, um, where the villain gets a happily ever after. Um, and it's just a twist on the fairy tale. Some of them are combinations of fairy tales, a couple of them are, and yeah, they are just a lot of fun. They are all um, romances. Some of them are lighter on the romance than others. And they're all written by different authors and are standalones. Uh, you do not need to read them in order, in order to like, or even all of them to like them. Uh, some of the books do uh, tie into like worlds and places of ser other series that the authors have created, but they are clearly all standalones and don't you don't have to read any of the author's previous works in order to read these some of the authors are continuing uh these series or they're continuing like their story world um in later books that they're writing too so i would say if you like a certain book uh keep an eye out on the author's particular um updates and stuff because they may be doing more in the same uh, vein they usually say at the back of the books or in like their own brief reviews, like say on social media or on Goodreads. So I would highly recommend if you really like one of them, check out the that author's particular page and keep an eye out. They may be doing more in that world. Some of them may not. So yes, um, all that rambling aside, I'm just going to um, re uh, list them in the order that I have read them in these this pile here. Um, these are not all like chronologically in order. I kind of just picked and chose which ones I wanted to read at the first because my library actually had all of them. I had bought one. I had bought Bluebeard and the Outlaw. If you saw my book haul that I did last year, uh, you will know that book was in it. Um, that's the only one I bought, but I would definitely, yeah, all the ones I've read, I would definitely buy them because they're really good. Anyways, without further ado, I will just start with the first one. And the first one, this is book eight. This is Gothel and the Maiden Prince by W.R. Gingle. I apologize if I mispronounce any of these authors' names or any of the titles' names or anything. I'm not great with names and words that I'm unfamiliar with. And I also apologize for the post-it note. These are library books. I'm just covering up the sticker with it. Um, this is obviously a retelling of Rapunzel um, with uh, <laughs> Gothel, obviously, as the hero. Why did I just pause there? I don't know. Anyways, uh, this story follows Gothel. She has um, kidnapped Rapunzel and locked her in a tower. And she, in order to, you know, all these princes and stuff come and these knights come by intent on freeing her. And she puts them in the, like a questioning game to uh, decide if they're like worthy of it, I guess. Worthy of letting the princess go. Um, and most of them have not made it. So, um, and then... Our um, prince character is Lucian. Lucian is, I think that's how you say his name. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, of course I can't now that I'm looking for it. But anyways, yes, Lucian. I believe you say his name is Lucian. Uh, he is the prince. He comes in and he is supposedly, at least according to what he says and what Gothel says, but he's going to rescue Rapunzel, but actually he's more interested in talking to Gothel about herself. Um, this one was super cute. Um, I have, uh, the banter in this book was very on par. Um, Gothel and Lucian are really good at just trading like quips back and forth. They are, the banter in this book was the best, honestly. I really like that. Um, Rapunzel's my favorite fairy tale. So, uh, retellings, I'm always very, 
eh, a little harder on, a little more lenient on of like, am I gonna like this or not? It doesn't hold up to my favorite story, things like that. Um, this one does hold up very, very well, especially with putting Gothel as a character you like. Um, she's still a little difficult and rough around the edges, but um, yeah, I totally rooted for her as a hero type character, as opposed to just the creepy, horrible villain that she is. Um, and I think with this fairy tale, it's very hard to pull off, especially if you like uh, Disney's Tangled, <laughs> because Gothel is so terrible in that movie. You just can't help but hate every Gothel that shows up. But uh, the author did a really good job of making her likable and putting their situations in. I also like the way the descriptions were done. Um, sometimes I thought uh, the like pros, so to speak, of like the surrounding stuff sort of um was a little uh how do you put this it wasn't bogged down because the story was never bogged down it was just more flowerly detail but it wasn't flowery i don't know how to list it but um yeah and sometimes the author would use words i don't know she is this is an australian author i don't know if the words i'm just unfamiliar with or if they're like australian equivalents to things so if you're american like me and you read this and notice some words are spelled differently that's why she's australian but um yes i really like this book i like the um rapunzel tape the rapunzel retelling i mean fairy tale um things left in i like the take on it and the banter between gothel and lucian is amazing and goth and lucian is just an utter sweetheart he is <laughs> He is a, what you could call a cinnamon roll character. He is just the best. I love him. Um, yes, I gave this one four out of five stars. And like all my books um, that I review and stuff, I have a full review of them on Goodreads as well. So I will try to leave a link down below to my Goodreads account. I really hate where they put the sticker on the next book. Because honestly, it's across her face whatever i'm very sorry if you want to see better pictures of these amazing covers too make sure you check them out on like goodreads or amazon or something because um yeah my stickers kind of cover up like this one they put it across her face yeah i don't like that uh this is baker and the wolf by jm stingle this is the one i read next uh this is book 10 in the series um but like i said these are all standalone so you don't have to read them in order i'm just telling you the number in case you're curious uh and this is a retelling of little red riding hood so um let's see let's see if i can remember yes um so basically sir cerise cerise uh is our main character and she runs a bakery obviously she's the baker um and yeah and she's just living a quiet life being pretty much ignored um and she just feels like she's invisible she's supposed she has no magic and that is not helping in attracting suitors in her small town and then she meets this uh she meets this guy who's been hanging out on her bakery and seems to be following her and he's like you know uh he has let's see i was like goal i'm trying to refresh my memory here sorry about this uh yeah oh yes and then he tells her uh you can come meet your grandmother which who you've never met on your father's side um because she wants to see you and she's like what uh because she thought her grandmother had left and or was didn't want to see them I think that was the case yeah that was the case and yeah and it's just so she's getting this attention from this guy who's just shown up and he has like gold eyes which is like wow that's that's really weird um and yeah and then there's just and then she when she walks home from work and stuff I'm not doing a very good job with this am I anyways you know what I'm just gonna skip a description um you should probably just go online and look it up yourself because my babbling is not working anyways i really liked this one i gave this one five stars i thought it was super sweet uh there is magic in this one um actually there's magic in all of them why did i just say that like the other one didn't have magic the first one does have magic in it they all have magic in them anyways i'm sorry i don't know where my head is today anyways i really like this book um it's really sweet i liked um the romance is a little bit more uh intense that's not really the right word th from the gothel and the maiden prince and hansel and the gingerbread queen those were much more lighter in the romance um this one was a little heavier but not it's intense by the way they notice each other or at least the way Cerise notices barbara who is the guy's name um 
and yeah, it's just like she notices more. Uh, it's not like the romance is more intense in like a, you know, detailed way or anything. It's just more, um, they notice each other more and she notices like what he looks like more and stuff like that. I really like this one. I like the French uh, overtones to it. It has a very French, um, like the bakeries and the names of people and stuff. It had a very fr French flavor to it. <laughs> uh, flavor, yeah, bakery. I please ignore my weirdness today. I am totally out of this. Um, anyways, yes. Um, and this one does have a very French overtone to it, which um does make sense. I think Little Red Right. No, Little Red Right Hand didn't come from France. Maybe it did. I don't know. But often I've noticed with those stories, they often put a French overtone to them. So I don't know. But yes. Um. I really liked this one. I thought the romance of sweet. Cerise was a wonderful character and Barbara was really nice. Um, he's one of those kind of like dark brooding type characters, but honestly, most of those male type characters I have to either, I either end up not liking or I have to warm up to them. Uh, but he, I didn't have to, I didn't with him. He was dark and, he was dark and brooding, so to speak, but he was still sweet too. And I don't know, I really liked him. He, he just struck me as a genuine guy from the start and not like creepy or like, I have to get to know you better as I read the book, you know, to actually end up liking you and getting over your broodiness. But yes, I really enjoyed this one. I am more coherent on my written reviews. I am so sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, but yes, I really liked this one. This one was probably one of my favorites. Um, I mean, so far, uh, Hansel and the Gingerbread Queen and uh, one other one that I'm gonna review here um, are like my favorites that I've rated five stars. All these other ones I've rated four stars. Four, it's either four or five stars. I haven't rated any of these books any lower. Um, yes, they are that good. These authors are really, really good. A lot of them I've only just now read their first, these books and I'm definitely gonna be looking at more of theirs. Um, which goes for the next one, which is The Goblin and the Dancer by Alison Tebow. And this is probably my favorite cover out of the whole series, which is saying something because these covers are beautiful, but I just love this one. Um, this is a retelling of The Steadfast Tin Soldier, which I've never read that fairy tale before. So as retelling vibes go, I don't know how it matches up. Um, I think it's a Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale retelling. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but for some reason I think it's that one, it's not Grimm's. And yeah, I don't know, I've heard the name, The Steadfast Tin Soldier, but I can't remember who wrote it. I think it's Hans Christian Andersen. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong or if you know who did write this story. But, um, not this story, but this fairy tale is based on whatever um anyways this one we follow uh the goblin who his name is grick and he works at the um metropolitan dance hall with in the elven world where he um he pines after the lead ballerina in the dance hall rosanna who is here grick's back here actually you can kind of see him right there yeah and um he He's basically in love with Rosanna. He doesn't think she knows he exists and he's too shy to talk to her and tell her how he feels. But then a um, elven soldier come, named Paul comes along and he like makes a bid for Rosanna's affections and then Grick gets extremely jealous. And in that jealousy, he makes a horrible mistake sending the three of them plunging in down into the depths underneath the ground into the, the goblin world. And now he has to get them back out. Um, alive because it is his fault that he's gotten them down there and then he need he wants to make amends by getting them back to the surface so yes that's a big old mess he got them in and yes and it's just this is a beautiful book honestly um inside and out and this one really struck me um in a different way rosanna i actually really connected with even though we never get her point of view in this book this is all told through Grick's point of view um just the way I there was one part where she was like saying you know she's only really good at dancing and it's like is that enough it's like you know people have told her or actually I think it was her mother yeah told her that you know dancing it's just stupid you shouldn't do that you know it's not important and 
as someone who's a writer um who's often thought that before like are my stories even mattering like what does it matter if I'm a storyteller and that's all I'm good at and I don't know that this just hit me really hard that I've had those doubts before and Rosanna was just like you know is my dancing even good enough and Greg's like yes it it inspires people it makes them happy and that is just as important as anything else so that that really touched me as an author who's had many 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 doubts of just being like is this even good enough like this is all I'm good at and it doesn't seem like enough but it just goes to show that our gifts are given to us by God and none of them are frivolous or worthless even if it's just you can paint really well you can write a story you can dance um and that's what you're good at and that's what you love to do if you love it and God has given you this gift then use it and it is worth something and this totally goes into just showing the worth of each of these characters and their struggles with it and it's just it is beautiful I love this book for that and it really really helped me thinking of that even though I wasn't having the doubt at the time of like um, if my stories were good enough or if I was even doing the right thing it made me feel seen this book really did and Rosanna's struggles with that really really made me feel seen and for that alone I really rec highly recommend this one and okay so the next one after that that I read is a totally different vein even though it still goes with gifts basically of people using their talents and it does fit in with storytelling it is the Sultan and the Storyteller it is book two. Oh, um, The Goblin and the Dancer is book five in the series, just so you know. This one is book two. And this one is a retelling of 1001 Arabian Nights, or just Arabian Nights. I don't know how it's usually worded as a retelling, but yes. This one uh, is going with, we follow Shahira, I believe is how you say her name. And she is, you lives in Zunbar, Zunbar, yes, Zunbar, which is like a Middle Eastern type country where the Sultan chooses a, has chosen a wife, a new wife for 39 days. And every, and every, um, yeah, for every day after every dawn afterwards, he marries them one day and the next day they're dead. <laughs> that is like, wow. Um, so yes, he's been how would you go through 39 wives? Goodness gracious. Um, now that I'm just thinking about that, I'm like, you just have to get married 39 times and they all end up dead the next day. And you, and people think you killed them. That is just messed up. Um, anyways, um, uh, Shahira's best friend is selected to be the Sultan's next wife and she decides, no, I'm not gonna let that happen. I'm not gonna let my best friend die. So she volunteers in her place to go there and her only hope of staying alive is that if she can tell the Sultan a story every night so that he will then fall asleep and not kill her. Um, because she has the magic of storytelling when she tells a story, um, magic comes out of it and weaves around it and basically whatever she says happens. So if she says in the story that the Sultan fell asleep and didn't wake up until morning, he will fall asleep and not wake up until morning. Literally anything she, she says happens and it is just and she goes and lives in the palace and then she realizes as she's living there as the sultan sultan zane zane i believe that's how you say his name so yes the sultan zane's uh wife and then she realizes there's a lot more going on here than anyone thinks and is the sultan really killing his wives or is somebody else and framing him for it um so yes i adored this book I for some bizarre reason I thought I would like this the least of the series I don't know why I thought that um maybe I don't know maybe it's just because it's a fairy tale or a myth I haven't really heard too much about um I mean I've read one other Arabian Nights retelling and I didn't like it but I only liked one book in that series so that's not saying much um <laughs> yes and Oh, I forgot to mention the author of this one. The author of this one is Lucille Luce, mm -hmm. Lucille Slater, I believe. You can see at the top here. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I'm very sorry if I didn't. 
But anyways, I totally love this book. Anyways, even if I can't pronounce your name, I loved your book. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm weird. Um, yes, I totally love this book. Uh, Shahira and Zane are perfect. I totally love them. They are great together. And I thought the romance was super, super believable in this one. It's very believable in the rest of them too, but this one like takes place in four days literally I think the entire book takes place in like three to four days and it was so believable that these two would have like never seen each other and then fall in love and it was totally believable and I just I love it when an author can do that because sometimes I can read entire novels or series where it's like the author's telling me these people are in love and I'm like I'm not feeling it <laughs> these people cannot possibly be in love they, they barely tolerate each other or whatever the case is but this one this one was so believable and it is one of the thicker ones and I do have to show this it is very beautiful like wow that is very pretty that's this it looks like this at the end too but yes it is I don't know if the Kindle edition looks like this but the paperback certainly does but anyways I just yes I loved this story I loved the surprises about it and it's like it got to a certain point near the end I was just like no this cannot be happening to my characters they need to be fine and I literally had to because I needed to go um, do feed the animals in the morning and stuff so I literally had to literally I had to read ahead a little bit and spoil myself that they would be fine just so that I wouldn't worry myself to death because of these characters that was how intense it was and how attached I got to them yeah it was just yes I love this book um this is uh this does involve a marriage um they do talk about consummating a marriage and then th there is a like fade to black scene where they do do it but I thought it was tastefully handled um there is no like really descriptive like kissing or anything like that beforehand that is in here though um they don't show anything of the you know fade to black moment they don't show anything of that um but I normally in books I don't like that but usually in the books that I picked it up and it happens to be in there um it's usually between like an unmarried couple I don't wonder if I think because these two were actually married I wasn't that and it wasn't like heavily descriptive beforehand it was just kind of like you know they kissed each other and that was it <laughs> and it was kind of just like you know it wasn't overly detailed where I'm getting uncomfortable but it was um just yeah it was just reasonable and very well done but it is in there if uh like you are sensitive to any of that type of thing or don't like anything like that that is in here so that is just a heads up for that one i gave this one five stars um the goblin of the answer i gave four stars i don't think i mentioned that and the last book that i have because wow this is video is getting a little long sorry about that but my head's not all here so i'm just rambling everywhere um last one that I've read so far is book four in the series and it is The Stepsister and the Slipper by Nina Clark. Claire. Why did I almost call her Clark? Nina Claire. Um, this is of course a retelling of Cinderella from the stepsister's perspective and this one I also I also gave four stars. I really enjoyed this one. Um, it's one of the smaller ones and this one this is gonna sound weird because Actually, I should tell you what the book's about. Um, uh, basically, the stepsister, Lady Charlotte, um, she has been, you know, groomed that she needs to um, find a rich husband because basically her stepmother and her stepsister, Blanche, um, they are in debt because basically when, they're, when the father died, he left them all in debt and now she, Charlotte has to find a rich husband and fast so that they don't lose their house and they don't lose their reputation and everything. So... She has just, you know, she goes to like parties and stuff and flirts with the men and tries to find the richest husband that she can catch. So when there's a chance to go to the ball and catch the prince, she thinks this is her lucky day. She can catch him and do it and, you know, get the prince of all things and be wealthy again in high society. But as it goes further along, she starts realizing, you know, maybe this could not be the right path for her. And just is it the right path and I can't say much more it is very small after all it's bigger than a couple of the other books I think so far the smallest ones have been Hansel and Gingerbread Queen and I think that's actually and Gotham the Maiden Prince is pretty small 
But anyways, um, this one, yes. Uh, this one, this is gonna say really weird, as I was saying before, sound really weird, but this felt like a fairy tale. Which you're probably thinking, Sarah, that's dumb. It's a fairy tale retelling. <gasps> yes, it is. Um, it felt very much when I was reading it like it was a fairy tale that I was reading, but not, you know, an actual fairy tale. That makes no sense. But um, yes, this felt very much like a fairy tale I was reading, and there's very light magic, like literally just you know things happen and like things like that. It's not heavily with magic like say the sultan the storyteller is very much heavy on the magic um this one is very has a light fairy tale feel um things just happen it's all very whimsical and pretty and yes i liked the tone of it uh charlotte is not my favorite type of character she is the t you know kind of the bossy flirty trying to catch a man type most of those i want to punch in the face if i find those characters in books i usually want to punch them um but I think it hap it was good um, being in Charlotte's head for this though because through that I was able to understand her rather than just be like stop it. It was just like I understood why she was doing what she was doing and then that's made it a little bit better to follow her and you could tell um, that you know maybe she didn't necessarily want to do it but she was going to play the game and you know be what her mother expected her to be and yes and there was the climax point of the emotions and stuff I really liked that point um you'll probably know the scene what I'm talking about when you read the book but I can't say much because it's a giant spoiler but it's just like and then the aftermath of that I really liked how it was handled and written just Sir Charlotte's realization of everything that's going on in her and around her and with other people and stuff. And it's just, it was very, very well done. I really liked that part. It was very emotional. It's, there's not a ton of action in this book, um, or danger or anything. It's more like emotional and the heart related and, but it was still written really well. Um, Blanche is actually our Cinderella character. She's a side character in here. She's Charlotte's stepsister. I really liked Blanche. Um, she was, a total sweetheart she was so kind and she was your typical Cinderella character and I just loved her I thought she was great um yes I I really enjoyed this book and maybe not as much as some of the other ones but you know all these books I have really really enjoyed in one way or another um and they're all different I I like how all these books are different in slightly different ways so that like you know if you like slightly more intense romance you could get one of these different books or like you don't like that much you could get something like Cinderella uh, the stepsister in the slipper or the goblin and the dancer where they don't really have much of it and it's just there's kind of like a book in this series for anyone and everyone and I really like that um yes so that is my re my four book five book oops I dropped the book <laughs> And so how many books do I have here? One, two, three, four, five. So this is five book review video. Sorry, I got a little long, um, but you know, I was just rambling on and on. Um, yes, so uh, let me know down below in the comments if you've read any of this series, if you find them interesting, if you would uh, consider picking them up, if my reviews need work, they do. Um, please don't mention that part. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you again soon, bye.